as we often say, follow us by social media, by the way of YouTube. Amen. We greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Coming back before you one more time. Amen. To declare unto you the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. Realizing God's word is real. It does not matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. Uh, God's word said forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. And if God's word is settled, amen, and me and you are unsettled, then we got to adjust to God's word so that we all can be settled. So at this time, we want to continue, amen, in the closeout of this Bible series, amen, spiritual gifts for the believers, amen. So we'll be going back tonight, amen, to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, amen, and I believe we stopped off at verse number 6, praise the Lord. So we want to, amen, let's start at verse number 6, Deacon. Yes, sir. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, start at verse number 6. And there are diversities of operation. All right, there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God. But it is the same God. Which worketh all in all. All right, so there are diversities of operation. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. All right, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit. All right, the manifestation of the Spirit. Is given to every man. Is given to every man. To profit with him. All right, now the Spirit that we're talking about is the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, the Spirit of God. It is given to every believer, amen, for us to profit. Praise the Lord. Now, also, I believe the Word of God said, for without the Spirit of Christ, uh -huh. uh, we are none of His. Yes, sir. So after you get baptized in Jesus' name, amen, you must receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because I believe Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.38, mm -hmm. repent and yeah. be baptized, every one of you, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So every believer, in order for you to call yourself a child, amen, of God, born again, you must receive the Spirit. Now, whenever a believer receives the Spirit, that seals their birth. Yes, sir. All right, it seals their birth and their plan, amen, in coming into salvation. But without the Spirit, amen, you can be baptized in Jesus' name, but without the Spirit of Christ, your birth is incomplete. Amen. But once you receive the Holy Ghost, that completes your birth, but it does not mean you are ready for heaven. All right. All right, because if the Lord bless you to live a month, amen, we rise to walk in the newness of life. You still got to live right. You got to learn Christ. You got to put him on, yes. take his yoke upon you, and learn of him. All right, so the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with him. Yes. All right. Now, verse number eight. For to one is given by the Spirit. All right. For to one is given by the Spirit. The word of wisdom. All right. The word of wisdom. So now, when the Holy Ghost comes, praise the Lord. Now, uh, to one. It is given the word of wisdom. Yes. All right. Not everybody in the congregation, the Holy Ghost blessed in this capacity. All right. All right. But to some, he grant them and he blessed them with the word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now, as I go through this manifestation of the Spirit, praise the Lord, I'm going to give a few examples, amen, to each and every one of them. Hopefully I can. Amen. All right. Now, let's, let's show an example, amen, of the wisdom that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. All right, 1 Kings chapter number 3, mm -hmm. verse 16 through 28. 1 Kings chapter number 3, verses 16 through 28. All right, Deacon. Then came there two women. All right, then came there two women. That were harlots. That were harlots. Unto the king. Unto the king. And stood before him. All right, the king we're talking about is King Solomon. And stood before him. And the one woman said. And the one woman said. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. I this woman dwell in one house and I was delivered of a child with her in the house and it came to pass the third day after that I had, was delivered that this woman was delivered also 
and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this wo woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I cons had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, one, the one said, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other said, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spake the woman who the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yard upon her son. And she said, O my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. All right, so I wanted just to, for him to read, amen. So many of us, I believe all of us, have heard about this story, yes. amen, of the judgment of King Solomon. Because remember, this was his first test case, if you let me say it this way. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But he had just, amen, prayed to God and asked the Lord. The Lord told him, ask of me anything. Yeah. Praise the Lord, and I will give it unto you. He did not pray and ask God for riches. That's right. He did not pray and ask God for fame. But what he prayed and asked God is for God to give him a wise and an understanding heart. Yes, sir. That he may be able to know how to judge between right and wrong, amen, good and evil. Mm -hmm. So the wisdom of the manifestation of the Spirit is to be able to judge a situation between good and evil, amen, with the guidance of the Spirit. Amen. Now, Solomon did not have the Spirit of God, praise the Lord, but this is speaking in terms of wisdom. That's right. All right, so as, as the story came before me, these two women, praise the Lord, both of them had two children. Mm -hmm. One died, amen, and the one that died, amen, the mother of that child that died, praise the Lord, took the other mother's living child. That's right. And the case was brought before Solomon. Yes. Praise the Lord. So Solomon said, in order for me to settle the case, because you have two mothers. Yeah. Uh, right. One is saying, that's my child, mm -hmm. and the other one is saying, that's my child. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So now, to be able to figure out who the real mother is, the wisdom that God blessed him with, now he told one of his servants, bring me a sword. Yes, sir. All right, and divide the living child mm -hmm. so that one can get half and the other one can get the other half. Yeah. But the real mother, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, her bowels yearned yeah, yeah. when she heard that the king was going to split her child in half. I love praise it. the Lord. But the other woman, she didn't care right. because her son is dead and gone. And if this other woman's son got to be dead and gone too, amen, both of them would be without the child. That's right. So she said, it doesn't matter. Divide the child. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Give me half and give her half. But when Solomon saw, amen, the real mother broke down in tears yeah. and began to yearn for her child yeah. and said, don't kill the child, save the but child. save the child and yeah. give it to her. When Solomon heard that and he recognized, he said the real mother mm -hmm. is the one that her bowels yearn 
and she cried out and she preferred her child to live even though he was going to be given the child was going to be given i want to be careful yeah. because that, it didn't say he or she that's right Bishop. praise the lord i don't believe it said he or she it just right. said a child right. so i don't want to say a male or a female right. i want to keep it the way the bible says praise the lord so solomon said give her the child that's right all right and because of that all israel heard of the fame of solomon mm -hmm. so this was solomon first test case after he asked god for wisdom yes, so the wisdom that the holy ghost brings and blesses individual to be able to deal with situation and to be able to know the difference between right and wrong Man. all right so i just wanted to give that example that and, and there's another scripture even that paul said mm -hmm. amen is there not one wise among you yeah um, paul said there must be one that is wise among us one that is you understand that is indulged with that wisdom from god that when situation comes up we'll be able to tell the difference praise the lord but this must be a manifestation only given by the spirit all right now another chapter we want to go to acts chapter 15 mm -hmm. verses 13 through 22 acts chapter 15 thir 15 13 through 22 all right deacon and after they had held their peace after they had held their peace james answered saying james answered saying men and brethren men and to me. Mm -hmm. Simeon had declared how God had the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the word of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood for moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every sabbath day then please it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their company to antioch with paul and barnabas namely judas surnamed Barsabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Praise the Lord. So now, this is another situation where a case came forward. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with the Gentiles being brought into salvation. Now, as the Gentiles were brought into salvation, many of the Jewish brethren of Jerusalem taught that the, uh, uh, the Gentiles, praise the Lord, must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. That's right. Now, if you remember me saying this a few weeks ago, it is called legalism. That's right. Praise the Lord, trying to achieve the righteousness of God by keeping the law of Moses. But keeping the law of Moses will not give you eternal life. That's right. There is no, praise the Lord, the law is good of itself, but no one can keep the entire law all the time. Right. All right, because if you broke one law, it's just like you broke all of them. That's right. Praise the Lord. But the righteousness, praise the Lord, comes by Jesus Christ, not according to keeping law. Mm -hmm. So as the Gentiles was brought in, some felt like they need to be circumcised. But remember now, circumcision, amen, is an outward appearance. That's right. All right, but what God was looking for is a circumcision of the heart. Yes, sir. All right, a new mind. Yes. Praise the Lord. This is why the Bible said, you understand, be not confirmed to this word but be transformed by the what? By the renewing of your mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then Paul also said in Philippians, let this mind be in you, all right, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now the mind that Jesus had was 
to please God. Amen. All right. Remember now, and the righteousness comes from God. Praise the Lord. And when God promised Abraham, in thy seed shall all of the families of the earth be blessed, the law was not in existence at that time. That's right. All right. And God told Abraham, amen, even the heathen shall be blessed through you by faith. Yes. So when the Gentiles was brought in, they came in by faith. It was nothing about keeping the law anymore. That's but they said, now let's write a few things. Yes. That they abstain from fornication, uh -huh. uh, from things strangled, amen, and from pollution of blood. Yes. But if they do these things, fear ye well. Don't put no more law upon them. That's right. And I've been saying, now every church needs rules. That's right. But if the people can't keep five rules, don't make a hundred. All right. Bishop. Praise the Lord, because you have more people rebelling. Yes. All right. And we got to be honest, I've said this before. Some rules the church have came up with for over a hundred years, yeah. it, it, it does not call for righteousness. Man. I know Man. some people think I get in trouble, but it's true. Praise Man. the Lord. And I say this all the time. If God accepts it, then it's good. That's right. Right. Now, if God's word says it's all right, That's I right. don't see no man on this earth should stand up and say it's not all right. That's right, Bishop. Because nobody's above God. Right. Absolutely nobody. So this is another situation of the wisdom that the Holy Ghost blessed the apostles then to settle the matter. Yes. And then the Holy Ghost intervened and they sent out letters, amen, and they sent these apostles and others to let them know that the Gentiles are brought into salvation. Leave the Gentiles alone. Yes. Don't put a yoke upon them that we, even we ourselves, are not able to bear it. That's right. All right, so it's a bad thing for the pastor to make rule, and the pastor is the one breaking the rule. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So keep your rules simple. Mm -hmm. All right, and your rules got to measure up to this Bible. That's Don't right. go right. make up a rule, yeah. praise the Lord, and you acting like you're on the moon. That's right, Bishop. All right, the rule got to govern earth. That's right. That's praise right. the Lord. Now, if we're on the moon, make the rule for the moon. All right. But if we on earth, make the rule for the earth. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. So keep your rule simple. And don't stretch the rule too much. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. All right, now. Man. Next, verse number, next one, Deacon, that was spirit of wisdom. Yes. All right. Verse number eight. Go back to verse eight. To another. To another. The word of knowledge. To, work, to another, the word of knowledge. By the same. By the same spirit. Now, the, the knowledge, praise the Lord. Amen. Knowledge and wisdom kind of go along. All right, now I'm going to show you of a story, or we will read a story in the Bible where the Holy Ghost blessed the apostle with the knowledge to deal with the situation yes. that came up. Because the Holy Ghost didn't reveal it. And I've said this before. The secret things belong to God. That's right. Uh, but the things that are revealed belong to us and, and to our children that we may do them. God does not reveal something for us not to obey. That's right. All right, and he's not going to reveal it until he's ready. Amen. This is why Jesus looked at Peter in the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Amen. He said, flesh and blood That's right. did not reveal this unto you, uh -huh. but my Father, which is where? In heaven. So he did acknowledge that he had a Father. Amen. And he said his Father is in heaven. That's right. He never called himself a Father. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. All right, you can Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Just read it. But a certain man named Ananias. But a certain man named Ananias. Sapphira, his wife, mm -hmm. sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And, cry, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose and wound them up and carried them out and buried them. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye 
have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord. And behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carried her forth, buried her by her, her husband. All right, so we're dealing here with the story of Ananias and Sapphira, yes. a husband and wife. Amen. They sold their land, which was their land. Mm -hmm. All right. But they decided that they were not going to bring all of the money that they sold the land for. They said, we're going to bring part. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to keep back part. Praise the Lord. But what they failed to realize that even though Peter was not around them when they sold the land, the Holy Ghost knew. Yes, sir. All right. So I, I want to say this now to anyone that we can do what we want to do. Remember, the Bible said, where shall I go from the Spirit of the Lord? Mm. Huh? Where shall I go from thy presence? God is everywhere and the Holy Ghost sees everything too. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. So, they thought that nobody knew uh, how much they sold for. I don't know why they kept back part of it. Mm. Might have been they want to go shop. I don't know. Mm. Praise the Lord. But what they failed to realize, that the Holy Ghost was present when they sold the land. Yeah. So, they brought back they brought part of it and laid it at the apostle feet. Yes. And the Holy Ghost revealed to Peter that what they're bringing is not the full amount. Praise the Lord. So Peter began to say, Brother Ananias, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Why? Huh? And say to the Lord, fill your heart, follow me, Deacon. Yes, sir. Be sure. Fill your heart to do what? To lie to the Holy Ghost. That's right. Praise the Lord. Read. Hold on a minute, Bishop. I'm going to go on to the next one. All right, now get on back to Acts. <laughs> but Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan, verse number three, yeah. fill thy heart to what? To lie to the Holy Ghost. All right, so he thought that, you understand, he was getting by, yeah. and with him lying to Peter, the Holy Ghost said, because I am involved in this. Yeah. All right, you're not lying unto Peter, but you're lying unto me. That's right. And anyone that lies unto the Holy Ghost is lying unto Jesus, and anyone that lied on Jesus is lying on God. I love Praise the Lord. This is the same thing. Remember now, when Paul was persecuting the church, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus met him on the road and said, Brother Saul, yes. it is hard for you to kick against the prick because you're persecuting the saints, you're persecuting me. Yes, sir. All right, because it's my church. Praise the Lord. So it is now, the Holy Ghost, he said, why had Satan filled that heart to lie to the Holy Ghost yes. and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why has it remained? Was it not thine own? Read Deacon. Yes, sir. And While that, it remained, mm -hmm. was it not thine own? Yes. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? All right, so it was conceived in the heart. Yes. All right, so once something is conceived, it will bring forth. That's right. All right, remember, even Judas at one time, Satan did have no control of his mind. That's right. All right, but it's not what until the time, amen, for Jesus to be betrayed, then Satan filled Judas' heart. Yes. So I'm going to say this. Don't have a mind for the devil to use. This is why I believe Solomon said in Proverbs 4, 21, guard your heart guard your uh, with all diligence, yes. for out of it are the issues of life. And remember this now, it's not what goes in a man that defies the man. That's right. All right, but it's what comes out of the man. This is why we must protect our seed of affection, which is our mind. Because this is what the devil is after. If he can control your mind, he will control what you do, when you do it, and how you do it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Read, Deacon. Thou hast not lied unto men. You have not lied unto men. But unto God. But unto God. And an eyes hearing these words. And he heard these words. Fell down. Fell down. Gave up the ghost. Gave up the ghost. Great fear came on all them that heard. All right. So judgment fell right away on this husband. Yes. Uh, and he died because he lied. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the, the Holy Ghost was involved in this. So this let me know, amen, that folks can lie and fall dead. Amen. 
Because if judgment comes upon them, so let it be. Amen. Uh, but God allowed this to happen for fear to come upon the church. For us to realize, praise the Lord, for us not to lie, for us to tell the truth. All right, read it. And the young men arose. Young men arose. Bound them up. Bound them up. And carried them out. Mm. And buried them. Buried them. Amen. They didn't call no undertaker. The undertaker was already present. Yeah. And they took him out, dig a hole, and threw him in. Mm -hmm. And his wife didn't even know. Didn't know Amen. That. Her husband is dead and buried. That's right. So she came in late. Yeah. Amen. Thinking, amen, that her husband was sitting in church. Yeah. Uh, enjoying the service. Right. And no nothing but the two of them. Oh. So she thought. All right. Praise the Lord. But she was about to get a rule awakening. Yeah. All right. What was the awakening they could read? Peter answered unto her. Peter answered to her. Tell me. Tell me. Whether he sold the land for so much. All right. And she said yay. And she said yay. For so much. For so much. And Peter said unto her. Then Peter said unto her. How is it? How is it? Ye have agreed together. You and your husband agreed to lie to the Holy Ghost. To tempt the spirit of and the Lord. And tempt the spirit Behold, uh, the Holy Ghost is not dumb. He knows. Yes. Uh, he sees. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, what's done in the dark? He knows what's done in the dark. He knows all. Praise the Lord. I remember real quick, Deacon, the Lord Jesus saw Nathaniel coming. Uh -huh. uh, and he said, Behold, a Nazarite, yes. indeed, in whom is no God. Mm -hmm. He said, Well, how do you know me? You this know. is my first time meeting you and your first time meeting me. But he said, Before Philip called you, yes. I saw you sitting under the tree. All right. How did Jesus saw him sitting under the tree? By the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Man. Praise the Lord. So the same way the Holy Ghost used Peter, amen, to give him the knowledge of the situation, yes. even though he was not around, it's the same thing he did with Jesus to show him Nathaniel sitting under the tree even before Philip called him. That's right. All right, so read it again. Behold. Behold. The feet of them. The feet of them. Which have buried which your husband. Which have buried your husband. Are at the door. At the door. And shall carry thee out. And carry you out. Then she fell down straight with All right. All right. The Holy Ghost didn't give her five minutes to repent. No, sir. I don't right. believe Ananias even had time to repent either. No, sir. Uh, it's a dangerous thing to be living wrong, praise the Lord, and not knowing when the Lord is going to call our number. Yes, Lord. Uh, this is why the Bible said, be also ready, uh -huh. for in such an hour you think not the Son of Man coming. Don't let us be like those virgins. That's right. Amen. They're waiting too long, praise the Lord. And the Bible went on to say, they that were ready Wait. went in. That's right. All right, but when those that came back and began to knock on the door and say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. It's too late. That's why the Bible said, in the day that you hear his voice, harden, harden not your heart. Don't turn salvation away. Praise the Lord. If you're wrong, repent and get right, right away. Yeah. Don't wait till next year. No uh, because even next five minutes is not promised. Amen. You may not get a chance to live five more minutes. Amen. So whenever you get a chance, repent and turn and do that which is right. So she fell dead. And buried her. Uh, and buried her. Where? Her husband. The reason why they buried her next to her husband, because both of them decided to do the wrong. Mm. Uh, and because both of them came up with a lie, the Lord said, I'm going to bury both of you next to each other. Oh, so don't be partakers of another man's sin. All right. If somebody wants to live in sin, you live right. Yes, sir. If they don't want to live right, leave them alone. Love them, pray for them, do whatever you need to do. Praise the Lord. But if they want to go to hell, their choice. Let them make their choice. You make your choice, as Joshua said. As for me and my house, yeah. uh, we gonna do what? We gonna sure. serve the Lord. Alright, so this is one of the manifestations of the Spirit when it comes to knowledge. Alright, Deacon, verse, verse number nine. Verse number nine. And to another and to another. Faith. Faith. By the same Spirit. Alright, now faith by the same Spirit. Now let's deal with this faith Amen. Of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to Mark chapter number 11. Mm -hmm. Verses 12 through 15. And on the morrow. And on the morrow. When they were come. When they were come. From Bethany. From Bethany. He was hungry. He was hungry. And seeing a fig tree. All right. Far off. Having leaves. He came. Mm -hmm. if, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it. 
he found nothing but leaves. But leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. Praise the Lord. Is that 15? That's first. Is that verse 15? That's verse 12. All right, keep reading. Yes, sir. And Jesus answered mm -hmm. and said unto it, said unto it, No man, no man, eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 15. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold up. All right, so now this story is telling us about the fig tree, am I correct? Yes, sir. So the Lord Jesus came to the fig tree because he was hungry. Yes. Which lets me know he's not the invisible God of the universe. Yeah. Because God said, if I was hungry, I don't tell nobody. That's right. Nobody knows when God is hungry or when God needs a snack. Mm -hmm. Uh, nobody knows what God eat, what God eat. But Jesus was hungry. Yeah. Uh, and he came to the fig tree happily, he might find some figs on the tree. That's right. But when he got to the tree, uh, he was surprised that there is no figs on the tree. No fig. Yes, please. Praise the Lord, just leaves. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, this is the same way of many believers. Uh, they look beautiful on the outside. They're decorated. You can see the leaves decorate the tree. All right. But what good is the decoration of the tree when the tree is not bearing no fruit? So every believer must not only look good on the outside. What fruit are we bearing? We as believers, the people of God, must bear fruit. Don't let us look good on the outside, but on the inside, amen, we are not right in the eyes of God. Don't be like the scribes and Pharisees uh, who clean the outside, uh, but they don't take time to clean the what? The inside. Because they love the praises of men. They want men to see what they're doing on the outside. But remember, the word of the Lord said, I, the Lord, I search outside. Is that what he said me? I search outside. Yes, no, he don't say he search outside. He said, I, the Lord, I search the what? I search the heart. Inward part. Yeah. Uh, and remember now, Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Yeah. Who can know it? But he said, I, the Lord. Yeah. Uh, listen to me. None of us have no right searching each other's heart. None of us have the right to search each other's mind. Lord. All right. Who going to do it? The Lord. The Lord going to do it. Praise the Lord. And right now, as even we sit here, and you sit where you are listening to this Bible study, God knows your heart. Amen. Huh? You may think somebody don't know what's going on in your mind, but God knows it, and he is the revealer of the intent of the heart. Praise the Lord. So now, verse number 20. And in the morning, and in the morning, as they passed by, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree. They saw the fig tree dried up from the Jesus cursed the fig tree. Yes, Amen. Sir. Because he didn't find what he was looking for. Now let me say this: He can curse you. Amen. And he can curse me if he don't find us doing what we should be doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So make sure when Jesus comes. Amen. You are found worthy yes. and you are in that place doing the will of God. Amen. Just like Jesus said, the prince of this world coming and find nothing in me. And because Satan did not find nothing in Jesus, that because that is because he was doing the will of God. So must the church. When the devil come to us, uh, he must find us busy doing the will of God. He must not find any room in us to come in. Uh, we must tighten up all the holes. Praise the Lord. Now everything that is loose, tighten it up. Because if you don't tighten it up, then all the devil needs, amen, is just an inch. Uh, and once you give him an inch, praise the Lord, he's going to take a few feet. So you don't want to let the devil in. All right, read Deacon. Dried up from the root. Dried up from the root. Peter calling to remember it. Mm -hmm. Said unto him. Said unto him. Master. Master. Behold the fig tree. Behold the fig tree. Which thou cursest. Which thou cursest. Is withered away. Is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you. And whosoever shall say unto this mountain. All right. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Be thou. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. Be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt. And in if you don't doubt in your mind, but shall believe. But shall believe. And those things which he said mm -hmm. shall come to pass. 
he shall have whatsoever he says. All right, so now this is a manifestation that is given by the Holy Ghost talking about faith. Mm -hmm. All right, you can move mountains, but you must not doubt. Now, you must not waver in your mind. That's right. Because the Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We either going to believe God or not believe God. That's right. We can't say we believe him and still don't believe him. Uh, it got to be one or the two. Uh, it's either we're going to serve him or we don't serve him. And just like Jesus said, no man can serve two masters at the same time. Mm -hmm. He will either love one and hate the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is worldly possession. That's right. You can't go after the world and still want to call yourself a child of God. Because John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And the world passes away. Yes. And the lust thereof. But they that do the will of God, that's what's more important. Remember, everything unto God. So do not spend Investing in things that will waste away. Yes. Don't be like the apostles in that is looking on the beautiful temple. All right, and just looking at how beautiful it looks. That's right. Jesus told them every stone uh, shall be thrown down. Did it happen? Amen. Yes, it did. Uh, Jerusalem was conquered by Titus, and that building was brought to desolation. So don't spend your time investing in things in this world that does not help you to get to heaven. As there's a saying, I don't believe it's a scripture, wear the world as a what? Loose. As a loose garment. Yeah. Jesus never said take them out of the world. That's right. But he said, Father, keep them from yeah. the what? Okay. From the evils of this world. So enjoy what God bless you with. But never put no worthy possession before the Lord. Let yeah. the Lord be first. Amen. All right now. Next one, Deacon. Yes. Going back to verse number nine. Well, verse number nine. To another. To another. Gifts of healing. None of the gifts of healing. By the same spirit. By the same spirit. No, I don't want to read it, but you can go there in the book of Acts chapter number 3, yes. verse 1 through 9. This is the healing of the man by the gate of the temple called beautiful. Yes. All right, because the Lord Jesus told him, the apostles there, in my name uh, shall you cast out devil. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to raise the dead. But it was going to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. So this was a manifestation of them receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost in order to heal the sick and to raise the dead. So the man that was at the gate of the temple, that man was crippled. But when he saw Peter, Peter said, look on us. Yes. Silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, give we unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Oh. The Bible said Peter took him up by the right hand, mm -hmm. lift the man up, praise the Lord, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. That's right. And the man began to praise God. And the man did not stop on the outside or by the gate. All right. All right. He followed Peter and John into the temple. That's right. Praising God and thanking God for his healing. Yeah. All right. So that is a scripture concerning healing. Yeah. All right. Verse number 10. To another. To another. The working of miracles. All right. To another. The working of miracles. Mm -hmm. Now let's look up a story when it comes to miracles. Matthew chapter 12, yeah. verses 22 through verse 30. All right. Then was brought unto him. Then was brought unto him. One possessed with de a devil. All right. Now this have to do with the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan. Mm -hmm. And I want to say Satan have a kingdom. Just like God have a kingdom, so does Satan. That's right. Bishop. All right. Read. One possessed with a devil. Mm -hmm. Blind and dumb. And he healed him in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. All right. So because this man. Um, possessed by this spirit, this devil, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. And now it's not speaking of the devil. All right, Satan is called the devil, yeah. but demons are also called devils and spirits. That's right. All right, so this man was possessed by this devil. Yes. All right, and because of the possession, uh, the, he possessed the man, the man was blind and dumb. Mm -hmm. So evil spirits can cause people to become blind and dumb. Praise the Lord. So sometimes when you see people, it could be it's an evil spirit that has caused them to be blind and dumb. Mm -hmm. All right, read. And all the people were amazed mm -hmm. and said, and said, is not this the son of David? 
But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And I don't believe there is no scripture in the Bible that says Satan kingdom is divided. No, sir. They work in unity. Yeah, I've said this before. The only division you find is in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to Satan and his gang, they work together. That's right. Uh, so I'm calling for every believer to look at this and say, if the devils can do this, yeah. uh, what more the church? Come on now. Uh, we must learn to work in unity work because where there is unity, there is, there is strength. Yes, sir. All right, read. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. All right. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. All right. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. All right, so I just want to say, verse number 30, Jesus said, he that is not with me is against, is against me. There is no middle ground, is that right? One and one. he that gathereth not with me scattereth, scattereth abroad. So this is the working of miracles. Yes. All right. I'm going back, Deacon. Yes. Uh, uh, to, to another one. prophecy. All right. To another prophecy. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when prophecies are given in the church, this is what Paul said must be done in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 20 through 21. All right. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 20 through 21. We're getting that. Yes, sir. That's all right. Right then the Holy Ghost finished with us, we're going to learn the Bible more. <laughs> we all going to learn it more, and we're going to re hopefully remember where these scriptures are. Yes. 20. All right, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 20 through 21. Despise not prophecy. All right, despise not prophecy. Prove all things. All right, prove all things. Hold fast. Hold fast. That which is good. That which is good. Mm -hmm. All right, so now every time there's a prophecy in the church, the prophecy must line up with the word. All right, so if anyone prophesy of anything that is against God's word, then that prophecy is not from the Lord. So we must test the prophecy. Don't let nobody prophesy and say, well, you should not judge my prophecy. The Bible says to test it. Yes. To make sure that that prophecy came from the Lord. Don't let nobody stand up in the church and say, the Lord, give me a prophecy and such and such. Oh, and just believe it. Don't just believe it. Make sure, amen, that it corresponds to the word of God and it promotes righteousness and godliness among the church. Amen. All right, now that's prophecy. All right, verse now keep on reading to another. To another? Mm -hmm. Discerning of spirits. All right, keep to, going. To another, diverse kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All right, read verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man several as he will. All right, now, we must have someone in the church that is able to discern when it comes to spirits. Yes. Somebody must be able to pick up on when there is a different spirit that is not the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. All right, now, 1 John chapter 4, yes. verses 1 through 5. Beloved, Beloved, believe not every spirit. All right, don't believe every spirit. But try the spirit. What must the church do? Try the spirit. We must try the spirit. Try the spirit. Test the spirit. Whether they are of God. Whether it is of God. Because many false prophets. All right, many false prophets. Are gone out. Are gone into the world. out into the world. Mm -hmm. Read. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. All right, this is how when you test the spirit, you will know whether or not it is the spirit of God or is the spirit of the Antichrist. All right, every 
Holy Spirit that confesses that confesses that Jesus Christ has come that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh in the flesh is of God. All right. So whenever someone say that Jesus Christ came, you understand? You understand? He was a man. That's right. Man. All right. That's the Spirit of God. That's it. Uh, the Holy Ghost will never tell you that Jesus came from heaven. That's right. The Holy Ghost will let you know that Jesus came from a man. That's right, Bishop. Uh, he was flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. He was not a spirit. And he was not in heaven before he came to this earth. No, sir. When you hear that, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. That's it. Now, the word Antichrist means instead of Christ or against Christ. That's right. All right. Instead of Christ or against Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. Read that again. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is coming to flesh is of God. Is of God. Mm -hmm. All right. Read. And every spirit. And every spirit. That confesses not. That confesses not. That Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. That Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Is not of God. So when you hear these preachers, amen, saying that Jesus is God. Yeah. That is not the Holy Ghost. Uh, that is not being led by the Holy Ghost. Man. The Holy Ghost will let you know, according to the scripture, God told David, from the fruit of your loins, from the fruit of your body, I would raise up your son. Yeah. All right. When Jesus was born, he was not the son of God at birth. That's why Jesus, the, the angel told Mary, that child that shall be born of you shall be called the son of the highest. That's he right. didn't say he is the son of the highest. That's right. He right. said shall be called. Yeah. And Jesus was not called, amen, the son of God until after the river of Jordan when he was baptized. That's right. Even at Jesus' birth, he was not even called Jesus. No, sir. They didn't even call him Jesus when his mother gave, him, gave birth to him. All right. Oh, you didn't know that, huh? He was not called Jesus until he was circumcised. All right, Bishop. That's when they called his name Jesus, and the name Jesus was not, it didn't come from Joseph, it didn't come from Mary, but the name Jesus came from God. That's right. Just like John the Baptist's name did not come from his mother or his father, but the name came from God. That's right. Uh, and even his father did not believe it, and the angel told him, you shall be dumb, uh, and you ain't going to be able to speak until this child is born. So John's father, Zacharias, went nine months without able to speak. But when John was born, uh, the maidens began to tell his mother, yeah. call his name Zacharias. Uh -huh. And she said, not so. Not so. There is no one in our family that is called by that name. Because she knew and her husband told her what the angel told him. Uh, and when they beckoned unto Zacharias, Zacharias asked for something to write on. And he wrote on it that this child name shall not be called Zacharias, but his name shall be called John. And the minute he said his name shall be called John, his tongue was loose. That's right. Uh, and he was able to speak as the angel had told him, you shall be dumb until the child is born, then you're going to be able to speak. Yeah. So God's word is right. All right, now, let's go on to chapter number 14. All right. Did we finish verses 1 through 5? No, sir. All right, finish that. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard. Whereof ye have heard. And it should come. That it should come. And even now already. Even now already. Is it in the world. All right, so that spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. Uh, meaning the spirit to deny that Jesus came as a man. Yeah. And he was a man. That's right. Read. And ye are of God. Ye are of God. Little children. Little children. And have overcome them. And have overcome them. Because greater is he. All right. Every believer, listen to this. When you feel, amen, like the devil, amen, is taking advantage of you, remember this. Greater is he. That is in you. Uh, we have the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is greater yeah. than the devil. That's right, Bishop. Praise the Lord. So always remember this now. We have this treasure in earthen vessel. Hallelujah. Uh, the Holy Ghost resides. In the belly yeah. of every believer. That's right. All right, and the Holy Ghost is greater than the devil. Yes. Don't let the devil feel amen and beat you up. You have something that is in you. That's right. But you'll never be able to use what you got if you don't know what you got. All right. Now, and what he's capable for. Yeah. This is why David told Saul, I have not proven. 
proving these things. Proving it. I, I'm going to use what I know work for me. Mm -hmm. I, and what I know work for me is a slingshot and some stones. Yeah. But all these stuff you're trying to dress me up with, I've not proven these things. We have the Holy Ghost. And don't let the devil tell you can't do it. Because Philippians said, I can do all things. That's right. And uh, through Christ that what? Right. Strengthen us. Yeah. So don't let the devil tell you can't do it. He can tell us we can. That's right. But it's up to us to believe it. We don't have to believe what he said. We got the Holy Ghost saints of God. Uh -huh. And the Holy Ghost come to do what? Lead us yeah. and guide us into all truth. The Holy Ghost came to give us power. Power to overcome the works of the flesh. Power to overcome everything that is against or contrary to righteousness and godliness. Yeah. So remember, we have the Holy Ghost and he's greater than the devil. Yeah. So when the devil come knocking at your door, tell the Holy Ghost to answer it. Don't you answer the door. All right. Because huh? he might be able to beat you up. Yeah. But if you let the Holy Ghost answer, All right. when you see the Holy Ghost open up the door, yeah. he said, nah, then this is over. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to turn around oh, and go walk away. What are you trying to say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean uh, don't lean to your own understanding. Oh, but in all thy ways, acknowledge yeah. him yeah. and he shall do what? Yeah. Direct your path. Yeah. Allow the Holy Ghost to direct you. Yeah. Allow the Holy Ghost to lead you. Don't lean to your own understanding because if we do, we're going to fail. That's right. But if we allow the Holy Ghost to guide yeah. us, yeah. Uh, yeah. the Holy Ghost never let anyone wrong. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Ghost always lead into truth yes. because He is called the Spirit of Truth. Yes. All right, now we're getting ready to close out. I want to deal with a subject that I notice sometimes certain things happen among the sanctified church. Uh huh. Praise the Lord. All right, dear. All right, dear. Yes, sir. The Bible is called the Book of Joy, the Book of Gladness, yes, sir. but it's also the Book of Pain. Praise him. Huh? It's a book of pain. Yeah, no. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 1. Follow after charity. Follow after charity. And desire spiritual gifts. Desire gift. spiritual gift. But rather that ye may prophesy. I desire what? Spiritual gift. Yes. I was talking to a group of saints, and I was saying, why is it we don't see certain manifestation of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. in the church? And I began to ask, and they said, maybe because the Bible said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Mm -hmm. But as I'm reading this now, all right, uh, and I want you to read it again. Yes, sir, Bishop. Follow after, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. So somebody, in order for these gifts to be in operation, somebody got to desire them. Yes, sir. So somebody needs to ask God for some of these gifts. All right. Because we don't see the manifestation of these gifts the way it's supposed to be in the church. So don't say it's because of this and that. Somebody has to desire it. Yes, sir. And if you desire it, God is going to give it. Just like if you desire the spirit of wisdom, mm -hmm. God will give it to you. Yes, sir. Uh, desire these spiritual gifts, and God will give you these gifts. Amen. All right, read. For he that speaketh, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, mm -hmm. but unto God. For no man understandeth him, albeit in the spirit he speaketh mystery. All right, so when one, when a believer is speaking in tongues, no one understands what he's saying. Not even him or her. That's right. Is understanding what they're saying when they're speaking tongues. Because it's a mystery. Unknown tongue. Uh, it's, it's an unknown to the one that is speaking, mm -hmm. and it is unknown to those that are listening. Mm -hmm. Because it is a heavenly language, yes. praise the Lord, that is being done by the impulse of the Holy Ghost. And when someone speaking tongues, they're speaking to God. They're not speaking to themselves, and they're certainly not speaking to no one else, except they're able to do what interpret. That's right. All right, now let's follow. I'll explain it more. But he that prophesied, but he that prophesied, speaketh unto men, speaketh unto men, to edification mm -hmm. and exhortation and comfort. All right, now there is speaking in tongues and there is prophesying. Yes, sir. 
are the prophesying speaking unto men to what? Edification. And exhortation. Exhortation and comfort. Now listen to what he said in verse number four. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Edifieth himself. He's edifying himself because that's between him and the Holy Ghost. But he that prophesied. But he that prophesied. Edifieth the church. All right. So when someone's speaking in tongues, they do not understand edify the church. Mm -hmm. But when someone prophesied, uh, they edify the church yes. because they're speaking in a language that the church can understand. Yes. All right. And prophesying is not always the foretelling of something. Prophesying can the Lord. And let me say this. Uh -huh. Prophesying is when the Holy Ghost takes over of a believer. All right. And God can use that believer to bring forth a word to the congregation. That's right. That's but they're not preaching. That's right. That's right. All right. Thanks. They don't need to study and take a test. That's right. The Holy Ghost comes on them when they're not even expected, and the Holy Ghost begins to speak as the Holy Ghost speaks to that person by an impulse. Yes. All right. So it edifies the church, and they speak language that everybody in the congregation can understand what they're saying when they prophesy. But when they speak in tongues, no one can understand what they're saying in tongues except someone interpret. That's right. All right, read. I would that ye all speak with tongues, mm -hmm. but rather that ye prophesy, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So the purpose, praise the Lord, of speaking in tongues is just between you and God. Mm -hmm. But there's no edification for the church. That's right. So what Paul is focusing now, he is saying, no, it's good to speak in tongues. Right. All right? That shows that the Holy Ghost has come. But what's more important is the body of Christ must be edified. Right. That's why he gives some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah. So this is what Paul is focusing on. The body of Christ just don't need to speak in tongues. The body of Christ needs to be edified. That's right, Bishop. One of the things that I, I question sometimes among us, this is just me. All right. People be just sitting there. Now, if it is done by the Holy Ghost, that's between you and God. But I question something. People just be talking, testifying. And then before they know, they start speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And then you're just back to, you understand? Back to talk. I said to myself sometimes, is that the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Or is that just something that people just do something as a normal thing? But standing up testifying before you go, you start speaking in tongues. <laughs> mm. If the Holy Ghost didn't tell you to do that, don't do it. Do it. I see this stuff among us. Yes, sir. So if the Holy Ghost is not bidding you to do it, you're doing it according to the flesh. That's not the spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Read it. Yes, sir. Now, brethren. Now, brethren. If I come unto you, Mm -hmm. Speaking with tongue, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. So speaking in tongues is good. Mm -hmm. All right, but listen to what Paul is saying. Except I shall speak to you either by what? Revelation or by knowledge or, or by prophesying or by doctrine. Yes, sir. Because if I come among you doing these things, then these things will edify you. Yes, you can understand what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. But if I'm speaking in tongues, you don't know what I'm saying. Read. And even things without life given sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall it be known what is pipe or heart? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? All right, so if the trumpet is blown, mm -hmm. and you don't know the meaning of the trumpet, you ain't gonna prepare for battle. Right. There is no edification. There is no knowledge. There is no understanding by a sound that is given, and you don't know the purpose or the meaning of the sound. Mm -hmm. So what Paul is saying is 
good to speak in tongues, praise the Lord, but it must go beyond that. All right. Now, speaking in tongues must go beyond speaking. There must be one among the people of God to able to interpret what the saints are saying when they speak in tongues. Because if everybody is speaking in tongues and nobody can interpret, that all of that did not edify the church. Mm -hmm. Read. So likewise, so likewise, ye except ye utter by the tongue mm -hmm. words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. You're just speaking into the air. There are, mm -hmm. it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. All right, there are many voices in the world. And none of them is without signification. All right, they all have their own meaning. Mm -hmm. Read. Therefore, mm -hmm. if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So neither one of us will understand what each other is saying. Mm -hmm. Read. Even so ye. Mm -hmm. For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, see that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. All right. So just don't understand desire the spiritual gift, yes. but desire that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Use the gift for the edifying of the church. That's right. To build the church up. Thank you, Lord. Read. Wherefore, mm -hmm. let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. All right. So any believer that's speaking in an unknown tongue, you should ask God to help you, you understand, to interpret, to understand what you just said in tongues. Uh -huh. It can be done. I know. Let me give you a quick story. I'll share this. I remember I went on a three-day fast. Uh, and a desire of the Lord to send my father back home. All right. Uh, and we had a group called the Intercessor Group. Mm -hmm. uh, we will meet every once or twice a month on Friday, and we will have all night prayer. But from that Wednesday until that Friday, we would fast. All right. And on that Friday night, we would go to the church and spend all night at the church. Mm -hmm. Young people, I don't know if you can find that today. Uh, young people ain't got time, you understand? Crying out to God all night in prayer. Yes. Uh, they, 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 they're ready for the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, but this group that God put together, amen. We would fast so much that my mother hated me fasting. Because mm -hmm. I was already skinny. Yeah. Uh, and keep fasting before you know it, I'm not my bones. Uh, but I know what fasting can do. All right, Bishop. So I turned my plate down for three days and shut myself in. Because I wanted the Lord to send my father back home. And I remember vividly that Friday night as the group gathered together. And I was on my knees speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. not knowing what I was saying, uh, but the Holy Ghost knew. Yes, sir. And then I had a friend, praise the Lord, still my friend. He was standing right next to me, listening to me speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And when I was finished speaking in tongues, he laid his hands on me and started speaking in tongues too. All right. And when he was finished speaking in tongues, this is what he began to say in English. He said, Jensil, your father, the Lord, is going to send your father back home. Now, I didn't say a word to my friend. Didn't know he didn't even know my reason for fasting. Mm -hmm. He didn't know my petition, but the Lord knew. All right, now. Uh, so he was able to interpret to me, amen, what I was speaking in tongues because it was done by the Holy Ghost, and the Lord now brought it in the way of English to let me know what you were speaking, what I speaking, this is what it means in English, that the Lord was going to send your father back home, and within a few weeks, mm -hmm. uh, that same friend saw me standing on the side of the road and said, where are you going? I said, you forgot what you told me by the love of the Lord? Mm -hmm. You said the Lord was going to send my father back home. He said, yes, I remember now. Uh, we went to that airport, and there he was. All right. Uh, so when someone's speaking tongues, somebody should be able to interpret. And I hope and pray that somebody desire this among the sanctified church. Thank you, Lord. Because there's always too much speaking in tongues, and nobody can interpret. Amen, Bishop. I hope somebody listens to this and asks God for that spirit to interpret tongues. Thank you, Lord. Read. For if I pray in an unknown tongue. If I pray in an unknown tongue. My spirit pray. My spirit pray. But my understanding. But my understanding. Is unfruitful. Alright, your understanding is unfruitful when you speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. 
Read. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with an understanding. I will also. pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will sing with an understanding also. And now, I'm not sure if you have even experienced this before. Maybe you have. But there are people that not only can speak in tongues, uh, they can sing in tongues. Mm. They can praise God in speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. I've seen this stuff before, praise the Lord. Yes, uh, and I'm seeing a uh, head shaking. So somebody has seen the manifestation of this before. Yes. But you don't find these things no more. Amen. And nobody can tell me that it's not need for no more. Amen, Bishop. Because the Bible never says it's only for a certain time. Mm. Mm -hmm. But we don't see these manifestations no more in certain churches. Amen. But if it's in the book, it's supposed to be manifested among the people of God. Now, thank God we have the truth. Is that right? Amen. And if we never interpret tongues, we still will make it to heaven if we live right. That's right. But if the Bible said desire it, yes. desire it. Desire. It's given to the church for a purpose. And a lot of times the church can be edified so much more than just preaching because we fail to see God and ask God for that spirit of interpretation or prophecy. That's right. To be able to build the church up. Because these gifts are important for the church. Amen. Still important. All right, read Deacon. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, mm -hmm. how shall it that occupy the room? How shall he that occupy the room? Of the unlearned, say amen at thy giving of thanks. Seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. And, and the man don't understand, how can he say amen? That's right. You can't say amen to something you don't understand, but too many people say amen to preachers, mm -hmm. and they don't even know if the man telling a lie or telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Huh? So don't say amen to everything. Make sure you say amen to the truth. That's right, Bishop. And even with me, don't say amen to me that's your pastor because I'm your pastor. Make sure what I'm saying is the Bible. True. Yes, sir. And this is what Jesus said. Search the scripture. That's right. Huh? For in them you think you have eternal life, but it's they that what? Yes. Testify of me. Yes, People of God, search the scripture. If Jesus said to do it, do it. Do it. Don't you let that pastor tell you amen. You can't on what I preach. Mm. You can't ask me if that's in the Bible. Look out now. I'm just supposed to believe it because you said, uh-uh. You tell that pastor, take him to the scripture. Yeah. Uh, John chapter 7, where Jesus says, search it. Search. Uh, and tell him, explain to me what you just said. Because if you can't show it to me in the Bible, what you just said was a lie. Mm -hmm. And if God said, don't tell me that God didn't say it. Mm -hmm. Because then you would be saying that God told a lie. Amen. So just like you could test prophecy, test the preacher. Because if he's preaching scriptures and quoting scriptures that is not in the Bible, you go to him and say, Brother Preacher, all that scripture you was quoting, tell me where it's written. And if he can't show you, he needs to repent. Mm -hmm. And tell you that was him, that was not the Lord. All right, you can read. For thou verily givest thanks well, mm -hmm. but the other is not edified. All right. I thank my God. I thank my God. I speak with tongues. I speak with tongues. More than ye all. All right, Paul is not saying amen. When Paul said he speaks with tongues and more than you all, amen, he's talking about in his own personal time. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul was one that spoke in tongues. He prayed in tongues. He sung in tongues. Praise the Lord. But he came to the understanding, praise the Lord, that even though he's speaking in tongues, what's more important is the edification of the body of Christ. Amen. And it must be done through the word of prophecy, through doctrine, or through exhortation. All right, read. Yet in the church. Yet in the church. I had rather speak five words. But he said, when I come to the church, I'd rather speak five words. With my understanding. With my understanding. And by my voice. That by my voice. I might teach others also. I might teach others also. Than 10,000 words. Than 10,000 words. In an unknown tongue. Paul said, it don't make no sense. I come to church and spend an hour speaking in tongues. And none of you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So he said, it's best for me to just to speak five words That's right. that you can understand, that you can be edified, that you can be built up, your faith can be built up with just five words, 
that 1,000 words right. speaking in tongues and the church is still stagnant. No growth in the church. Mm -hmm. Read. Brethren, Brethren, be not children in understanding. Be not children in understanding. In understanding. In understanding. How be it? How be it? In malice, mm -hmm. be ye children. Be ye children. But in understanding. But in understanding what? Be men. All right. So Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Mm -hmm. But when I became man, I put away childish things. Praise the Lord. We all must grow. We all must get to a place where we have matured in the word of God. Sometimes you come to church, and I've said this before. Your preacher called for revelation, and people in Genesis, uh -huh. reading from Genesis. I know. I've been coming to Southern School 50 years. Mm -hmm. And every time the preacher called, first John, you in St. John. Mm -hmm. You and John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? First John and John. Yeah. Both are John, but after 50 years in Sunday school, you should know the difference between First John and John. Yes, sir. The gospel. Read. In the law. In the law. It is written. It is written. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. All right, no matter what God do and how he speak, some folks still ain't going to believe. Wherefore? You would think miracles would change people. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Miracles don't change folks. Some people, some. some. You don't believe me? Go dig up all them Israelites that died in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. After miracle, after miracle, they still, still didn't they believe God. Right. So miracles don't change people. Some people will get changed behind a miracle, and some folks, even though after the miracle, because some folks don't even follow for the miracle. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus told them. You know what I'm saying? Y'all follow me for the fishes and the loaves. Yeah. But when he began to tell them, uh, and he laid on them some heavy stuff, oh. he said, how can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? Yeah. From that day, many of his disciples did what? Turn, Turn and walk away. That's right. Uh, when Jesus began to tell them the spiritual things yeah. and what's expected of them to do, they said this is a hard saying. Yeah. How many have said it's, a, it's too hard to serve the Lord? Mm -hmm. uh, the way of a transgressor is hard. Serving the Lord is a simple life. All it calls for is one word, obedience. Uh, and in order to be obedient, I got to love the Lord. And because I love him, I'm going to obey him. Huh? My obedience manifests my words when I say I love the Lord. Because Jesus said, why callest thou me master and Lord, and you don't do the things that I'm telling you to do? Mm -hmm. So stop calling Jesus Lord. Stop calling him master, and you ain't doing what he said to do. That's right. Don't act a Christian. Be a Christian. Be a Christian. Live it. Huh? For the unbelief. 
believer. Mm -hmm. But prophesying serve is not for them. All right, prophesying is not for the unbeliever. But that believe not. But, but that believe not. But of them which believe. All right, so prophesying is for the church, not for unbelievers. That's right. Read. If therefore the whole church. If therefore the whole church. Be come together into one place. And all speak with tongues. And there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say that ye are mad? Now, what if four people come in and all of us are speaking in tongues? Mm -hmm. They have no knowledge about speaking in tongues. You know what Paul has said? What he said? They're going to look at these folks and say, these people are mad. They're going to lost their mind. Everybody in the church speaking in tongues. Yeah. This is new to us. We've never seen this before because they're speaking a language that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. So Paul said if they come in, they're going to say, these folks are mad. Yes. Read. But if all prophecy. But if all prophecy. And there come in one mm -hmm. that believeth not. That believeth not. Or one unlearned. Or one unlearned. He is convinced. He is convinced. Of all. Of all. He is judged of all. All right, because when the prophecy is spoken, praise the Lord, it shows that unbeliever is sinful state. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why the Bible also said, Jesus said when the Holy Ghost comes, he's coming to do certain things. Yes. To convict the world of sin uh, and of judgment. Praise the Lord. So when the Holy Ghost comes through prophecy, when a unbeliever comes in the church, that prophecy comes forth in such a way that condemns that sinner and reveals to them their sinful state. Yes. So this is what Paul is saying. All right, read. And thus, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. All right, because of the prophecy, the secret of his mind is made what? Manifest. manifest. And so falling down, and so faith, falling down on his face, he will worship God. He will worship God. And report that God is in you of a truth. Praise the Lord. So now it comes in such a way that it condemns the person. Yes. How many of us live so? That our life, which is Christ's life, condemn the world. Mm -hmm. Or when they see us, we are just like them. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Our life that we live, which is the life of Christ, should condemn. Yes. Should let them know, praise the Lord, that these folks are righteous. Mm -hmm. But you will always ask some people, no matter what, That's they're going to do what they want to do around you. Be magnified. Amen. But as long as the eye can be seen. 
seen in me, praise the Lord, Christ will never be magnified if the world see me. Mm -hmm. The world must not see us, they must see Christ. Amen. And this is one way the world see Christ. By this shall all men know that ye are what? My disciples, when you have what? Love. Love. So we can come and jump and shout, the church can sing and carry on. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. But when the world look at the church and see that we're not loving each other, mm -hmm. they know right away that's not Christ. That's right, Bishop. That's not of Christ. That's of the devil. That's right. Uh, right. But when the world see the church loving each other, mm -hmm. then they will be convinced that these people are not talking Christians. Yes. Uh, they are the real deal right. because they're manifesting true love. Right. And this is one thing that Jesus drove into the apostles before he left this earth. Mm -hmm. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, mm -hmm. uh, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Yes. Uh, he said, when I leave this earth, continue ye in my love. Mm -hmm. Love one another. Yes. Uh, let love about. And don't just love in words only. And I give this example. Don't tell me you love me. Mm -hmm. And you see a bear went in my office. Mm -hmm. And you saw me come, you said, see me coming in the door. Yeah. And don't worry that the bear is in there. Don't let you know. But when I come to the door, you agree. Brother Pastor, I love you so much. I thank God you're my pastor. Yeah. I know the Lord sent you to me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead on in. Uh, but you know, if I go to the office, I'm going to be destroyed. Be able to interpret. One should be interpreted. Read. But, but 
If there be no interpreter, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Say, if nobody can interpret, just keep silent. And let him speak to himself. And speak to yourself. And to God. And to God. Let the prophet speak two or three. Mm -hmm. And let the other judge. So even the prophets, let them speak two or three. Mm -hmm. And let the other judge. Yes, sir. Read. If anything be revealed to another. And if anything be revealed to another. That sitteth by. That sitteth by. Let the first hold his peace. So if one is speaking and something is revealed to you, don't jump in. Wait. Wait. Uh, wait till it, wait till it's finished and then say what the Lord has put on your mind or in your mouth. Read. For ye may all prophesy one by one, mm -hmm. that all may learn and all may be com comforted. All right. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. All right. So the spirits of the prophets are what? Subject to the prophets. So if the person is being guided by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will tell him when I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know how it is sometimes with us preachers? Mm -hmm. Guilty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the Holy Ghost is finished. Mm -hmm. The plane is landed. All right. The Holy Ghost don't, um, got off. Yes, sir. Uh, and you still want to act like the plane is up in the air. Want to take off again. <laughs> uh, when the Holy Ghost is done, Holy Ghost is done. Go sit down. Uh, like you say, brother preacher, it's good to see you get up. Yeah. And when the Holy Ghost is finished, it's good to see you sit down. Yes, sir. Lord help us, preachers. <laughs> All right, one more verse, Deacon. We'll close out. God is not the author of confusion, mm -hmm. but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Lord, we ain't gonna go to verse number 34. All right. Because that's the, that, that, that's the book of pain. All right. Praise the Lord now. But these are what? Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Uh, for the believers, for the church, that's for the edifying of the body of Christ. So I hope tonight somebody sitting here will desire one of these spiritual gifts. Amen. Uh, and desire uh, that you may be able to interpret tongues. That would be wonderful. Amen. Praise the Lord. But if you don't never interpret tongues, live right. Yes, live right. Do right. Uh, and if you live right, heaven belongs to you. It belongs. Yes, sir. Uh, if you don't able to interpret tongues, live right. Live right. Do right. Act right. Walk right. Talk right. And if you do that, heaven belongs to you. So may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May God give you peace is our prayer. In Jesus' name.